And verse number one. The apostle Paul, who wrote Romans, says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law, the Spirit of life, in Christ Jesus, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Father, bless your word. Thy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Mickey, I want you to entitle this tonight, When God Talks to God. Amen. All right. Now, the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, folks, of all the chapters in the Bible, and there are many good ones. We're talking about a whole chapter now, not just a verse. The eighth chapter of the book of Romans is an outstanding uh, compilation of the Spirit's power and work in your life, and it's something that you ought to, you ought to, uh, you ought to read it, you ought to study it, you ought to look through it, time and time and time again. Uh, the eighth chapter of the book of Romans is the fruit and result of the atonement and the finished work of Christ. That's what you get in Romans eight, and uh, and and to me. It's one of the worst things that you could say to me or any real Bible-believing Christian is to in any way detract from his finished work, what he accomplished at the cross. He accomplished at the cross of Calvary, above and beyond infinitely, anything that had ever been given before, including the law. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the book of Romans chapter number 8, uh, sets for us a new standard. And he tells you in verse number one, there is therefore now no condemnation, no judgment, no damnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk. And this is what's important to understand about this. Not who sit, but who walk. Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So this definitely speaks right into what we call fellowship, but it also has more to do, uh, more to do than simply fellowship. It has to do with your armor. It has to do with who you are, your identification, yeah. what he makes you to be and what he changes you into. Because when God began a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See what I mean? He will perform it. And so he started something that he will complete. God never starts anything and then stops it and leaves it hanging. He finishes what he starts. He says this contrast for the law of the spirit of life hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now say, what is the law of sin and death? The law of sin and death is written on those two tables of stone that were carried down from Sinai. Yes. This is not to put those things down in any sense, but it is a comparison. Those stones could never give life. Right. Never give life. So for someone to come along today and try to get you to observe this and say that this is life, he's a liar and a deceiver. Life comes from the living one. And the only life that, is, that ever has been or ever will be is the life of God. And so he says, the law of the spirit of life hath made me free from the law of sin and death. What happens is that you have one law contrasted against another law. So what happens? Well, you have the law of the spirit of life, which is a higher, infinitely higher, more powerful law than the law of sin and death. And of course, it's the law of Christ. It's the law of the New Testament. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 6, who hath also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. See that? And here's your contrast, because the letter is the law, but the Spirit is the New Testament. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means that the New Covenant, the New Testament, goes far above and beyond what could ever be written down. Amen. Amen. There's no way in the world you can do it. Why? Because you cannot, as I've belabored the point a million times, there's no way in this world that you can categorize, put in a cage, identify, and, and, you know, like you'd put under a microscope, the Spirit. The Spirit is a living being, the Holy Ghost of God. Yes. He's alive tonight. Amen. Amen. He lives. This is why you'll see in a moment when I say, when God talks to God. And that's quite a thought. Think about that. 
When God talks to God, amen. That's quite a thing. So the law of sin and death. The apostle says in Romans chapter number 7 and verse number 5, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto what? Death. death. Thanatos is the Greek word. Death, 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 death. Did you know that nothing ever died in the presence of Christ? Nothing ever died. And every funeral he got around, somebody was raised from the dead. Amen. <laughs> the widow of Nain's son, we told you about her the other day. Nain, our guide pointed out to us one time when we were in the Holy Land, he said, oh, by the way, see this hill right over here, this sloping hill, there's nothing there, just some brush. He said, that's Nain. That's it. That's Nain. If he hadn't pointed it out, there's no signs, nothing, no village or anything. It's just a place on the map that has come down through history that they know its name. It's not about the place, it's about the person anyway. Amen. So he said we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit to death. See what the law did? It brought death. But the apostle says in Romans 7 and verses 14 and 15, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. So he realizes the dual nature now. And you have to be born again to have a dual nature. If you're not born again, you have a single nature. There's just one nature. And that's a fallen man. But if you're born again, there's a dual nature. So by the fact that the flesh lusteth against the spirit... And the spirit against the flesh shows that there is going to be a warfare yes. inside your soul. Amen. Yes. And uh, as the old timers used to say, whichever one you feed the most is the one that's going to win. <laughs> Amen. And the feed, of course, is to take God's word. And by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, let him write it in your heart. You remember what he said in the book of Jeremiah? He said, the time will come when I no longer write the word or the laws in stone. He said, I'll write them in your heart. In the heart of flesh, I'll write them inside you. Yes. And that, of course, is what's happened because the law was fulfilled in Christ. Every bit of its righteousness, all of its, all of its righteous demands, he completely and fully fulfilled it. Yes. The Bible said in Romans chapter number 8 and verse 2, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, now watch this, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. Now here's the thing about it. Does sin still bring forth death? Of course it does. You can spin it any way you want to. Try to cover it up and hem-haul around with it, but it still brings forth death. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, in the book of Romans chapter number 8, when God talks to God, we need to get into the idea and begin to think about what is sin? What is God convicting us for? What's really going on inside our soul? Because when you go to a doctor, that doctor may see the symptoms. He may see a rash or he may see a knot or he may see uh, blood or something of that nature. A good doctor is not so concerned about the symptoms as he is about the cause. Let's find out what's going on here. So he begins to run tests to make a diagnosis. And this is what the Bible's talking about. The Bible's not interested in putting bandages on your problem. No, no, not at all. That's where the devil works. That's where his power is manifest. If he can keep you in the, in the, in the, in the doctor's office patching yourself up and putting bandages on your problem, then you'll never get any power and you'll never get any victory because you'll never find out what the real problem is. You see, it's the work of God talking to God. It's the work of the Holy Spirit of God to open you up and show you what the real problem is. And sometimes that's not an easy thing, but it's a very important thing because the Bible says here in Romans chapter number eight, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, everything about him is life. Did you know that? Yeah. To touch him is life, to hear him is life. He is life. In him was life, the life of the light of men. He's light. The light shineth in darkness. Darkness comprehended it not. They don't understand him until the Holy Ghost begins to open up who Christ yeah. is to them. Yeah. That's when you come to salvation. 
So the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. So there's a freedom here from the law of sin and death. So how do you do that? Well, you live above the condemnation of the law. That's what you're doing. Plain words, you begin to live above the condemnation of your flesh because he cannot condemn you in the spirit. That's impossible. That's an impossibility. Your spirit has been born again, but he can condemn your flesh. This is why he tells you that if you live after the flesh, you'll do what? You'll die. You'll die. You'll die. And we're not talking about unsaved people. Brethren, if you live after the flesh, you'll die. So we all have a fleshly nature. Sarkos in Greek, we have that old fleshly nature. And, uh, you know, the Greeks, were, were, they're pretty, they had a lot of nuances. A nuance simply means a different shade of meaning on different things and different words. In other words, they can take one word that, de uh, depending on the context of that, it may mean something entirely different than it did in another place. And that's, uh, that's quite a thing. So you've got to watch it. But it also makes the Bible quite a book do too, doesn't it? Amen. Yes, it, the Bible's a beautiful book, folks. A beautiful book. So if you Christian, if you're born again, you get out of here and you begin to live like you did before you were saved, you are not exempt from the condemnation of sin in the flesh. If you live like that, you'll die. But if you through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, not your spirit, but the Holy Ghost, mortify the deeds of the flesh, mort, morte, put to death the deeds of the flesh, you'll live. So does that not tell you right there that there's a battle going on? There's a battle raging, and you've got to deal with it. All right, that's true. That's it. All right. So here's what you need to know. What do I fight? Where's the battle rage? What, what, what? Identify my enemy. See, this is the issue. What do I need to deal with? See what I mean? You say, well, I've got a, I've got a tongue problem. Well, but you really have a heart problem. The tongue is simply that manifestation of what's going on in here. You need to find out what's going on in here. Where do you need help? We want to go to the source. We want to deal with the issue and get help for you. Amen. He tells you in Romans 8, he said, If God be for you, who can be against you? You remember I've told you that's a rhetorical question. So what's that mean? That means the answer is in the question. It's obvious. The answer is given when you ask the question. If God's for you, it may be indifferent who tries to be against you. It's settled. The issue's over. See what I mean? There's no power greater than God. He wants you to live. He wants to bless you. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to have victory. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have fellowship with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's one of the things that so many churches miss. They don't have that fellowship. And that's a shame. That's a shame. Because one of the sweetest things on this earth is for two brethren that love the Lord to walk in agreement with each other. Yeah. How, you know, sweet fellowship yeah. of the saints of God. Right. He said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples. If you have hate one for another, right? No. Not what he said, is it? No. He said, if you have love one for another. Yeah. Exactly. In 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 4, he says, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. You know what he just told you? He said, if thy heart condemn me, God is greater than my heart. In plain words, my emotions, my immaturity, uh, peer pressure, and peer, peer pressure is what he's referring to here, judged of other people. If you live your Christian life trying to follow what one says and another one says and another one doesn't like this and this and this and this, you're going to be in a mess until you're gone from this world. You have to have that fellowship with the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is in this world to open you up. God talking to God yeah. to make intercession for you. He says in Romans 8, 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Yeah. Romans 8, 33, it is God that justifieth. You see that? Yeah. I don't doubt I'm probably one of the sorriest low-down dogs ever lived if you get among some people. <laughs> no doubt in my mind about it. 
But you know something? Ask that little lady I'm married to over there and ask her how much that bothers me at night when I roll over and try to get a little sleep. Not one bit. The only one that matters is the Lord. And I want to make sure that the life I'm living, that I can get on my knees and I can hear him and know he hears me. That's what matters. If I know that I have fellowship with God, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's all that really matters. So who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Simply, you know, he's the one that makes the difference. He's the judge of the whole. Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? Said that standing over Sodom and Gomorrah. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also does what now? This is where God's talking to God. He maketh the intercession. The Holy Ghost is talking to God. Is the Holy Ghost God? Of course he is. Of course he is. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost make up the Godhead. So here's God talking to God. For what? He maketh intercession for us. So this begins to get us into what we're talking about in here tonight. In John chapter 15, verse 5, he says this. He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. We all have a tendency to get carried away and take off and, and run ahead of ourselves or run ahead of God. And instead of, instead of, instead of as, as Moses said, stand still and see the, see the, and, and see the hand of God. Yeah. Stand still and see the power of God. Stand still and see what he's going to do. And what he did was split the Red Sea. And so he said here that without him, we can do nothing. Yeah. We are in complete dependence on God to try us and to lead us. And he means for it to be that way. God did not give you a list when you got saved and told you, you live by this list, everything will be fine. No, 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 no. God wants you, and he wants to talk to you, and he wants to have fellowship with you. You are the highest creation that God ever will make. He put you in a place where he can fellowship with you. There's not one word in the Bible about fellowshipping with angels or with cherubim, or seraphim, or any of the rest of them. And this is not to put them down. They serve their purpose. They are what they are. God made them to be. But he fellowship with you. And what's that mean? It's reciprocal. Back and forth. Back and forth. To receive from the Father and give back to the Father. Are you walking in the light as he is in the light? Then you have fellowship one with another. And while you're doing that, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, is cleansing you from all sin. Now, just think about it. You're walking in the light. You have fellowship. And you have a constant cleansing taking place in your life. Therefore, you're not sinless, are you? That would make no sense. Not whatsoever. If he is constantly cleansing you from your sin to have fellowship with you, then it's obvious that you're not a perfect being. No. The day will come when your spirit will be perfected according to the book of Hebrews. But right now, you live in a sinful, fallen world. You have a sinful, fallen nature, but you're also born again. That sinful, fallen nature cannot have fellowship with God. It is enmity to God. It is, the Bible said it is not even subject to the law of God. That's what it says. That's sinful nature. But the man that is born again, he wants you to walk in fellowship with him. Yes, All right. In order to do that, he's got to be the one who does the issue, who searches the heart, try the reins. And by doing so, he's able by his own, his own purpose. God's got a purpose for all of us. And by that, we are able to walk in light because we are walking in agreement. Koinonia is the Greek word, walk in fellowship, walk in the light. This is what he says in Romans 8. Who walk, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The Holy Ghost. 
and have fellowship with the Father. I love it. I love it. When I'm sitting at the table and I'm eating my cereal and I stop eating my cereal and I start praising God. I do. <laughs> I love that. I love that when my soul begins to move and I can feel him move through that room just as surely as I stand before you tonight. Oh, yes. you, how many of you know what I'm talking about here now? Yes. Now, you can't, you can't fake that. That's no, that's, no, that's no fakery on God's part. That's the Holy Ghost. Yes. But what he just did is come into your soul and have sweet fellowship with you and it just lifted you. Yes. Thank you Lord. I mean, lifted you. And see, that's the earnest of our inheritance. The Holy Spirit's the earnest. He's the guarantee, the down payment that we know the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I went 27 years, didn't have a clue what that was. But then when I met him, I did. Oh, yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. And the Bible says, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So why don't you just simply say, if any man have not the Holy Ghost? Because there's a difference in the application, not the person, but the application. Because the Spirit of Christ, when you have the Spirit of Christ, you've got the Spirit of victory. He lives. He lives. He lives. And you know, the Spirit of love laid his life down for you. Oh, there's just something about it. I don't, I, you know, it either happens or it doesn't. But then God begins to talk to God. Because from your heart, he begins to speak to the Father. And here's how he says it. This is, this is, quite, a, this is quite a way to say it. Psalm 139 says, Search me, O God. And know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Would you call that an honest prayer? Would you say this man is saying, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I've any particular sin that I can think of that I've committed, but there's a whole lot more going on in here that I'm conscious of, and I'm going to trust God to really show me what's inside my soul. That's what he's saying. That's what's going on. Jeremiah 10, 23, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. See that? And uh, Proverbs 20, verse 24, man's goings are the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? And here he, the Lord says things sometime in the Old Testament in a sense of mockery. And here in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 11, listen carefully to the way he says this. Behold all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks. Walk in the light of your fire, and in the sparks that you've kindled. This shall ye have of mine hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. You reject the light, then walk in your own light. Create your own fire. In other words, find this guru, find this new age movement, uh, find this counselor, find, you know, find this new belief. Find whatever's trending and, 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 and like a cafeteria, pull from all of it and put it all together into your life and, and enhance your spirituality. You ever noticed how when you get into an occult, they're always talking about their spirituality? Yeah. Yeah. Walk in the light that you've created, like a cafeteria religion. You pull a little bit from the Kabbalah. You pull a little bit from the Koran. You pull a little bit here from uh, from uh, from from uh, from from the uh, the uh, Zoroastrianism, you pull a little bit from over here. You get a little bit from Buddha. You find a little bit from Confucius, and then who the latest guru is in America? I saw a thing the other day: a woman standing before a mirror, and she was all dressed out, had this big mirror in front of her, and she was giving, and she, she was talking about it. The mirror wasn't there, but she was speaking as if she she was. And she said to the people sitting there, now let me tell you something. This is how I start my day, and this is where you'll get your victory. She says, I look into that mirror, and it's settled in my soul and in my heart. That's the one I love. Mark it down. I don't care who the so-called Christian guru is. If they're up there teaching you to love yourself, they are dead wrong. But... If they're up there teaching you to love, their self, love yourself, it's because they love themselves. That's exactly right. I'll be honest with you. When I look into that mirror, buddy, I don't like what I see. I look and I look and I say, you sorry low-down dog, wasn't it for the grace of God? I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> I'd say, I look at that thing in the mirror and I say, you know, the Lord, you're long-suffering. 
gracious and merciful. Hallelujah. I look into that mirror and I say, you know, you'll take anything. <laughs> it took me. Yeah. yeah, no love there. If you, if, you, if you love the Lord Jesus the way you ought to love him, that'll take care of the rest of it. And you'll love the ones you need to love. But that love should first be directed toward him. Because here's the thing about it. What you send to him, he sends back to you. And this is working in the heart. He said, for what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. And I've mentioned it to you a number of times about likeness of sinful flesh. So what does that mean, preacher? It means that God incarnate, but he did not have your, 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 your condemnation that you inherited from Adam. He did not have that. He was a sinless, perfect being that walked this earth. And since the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and they after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Carnal, carnally means fleshly, carne. In, in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Spanish means flesh. Chile con carne. Used to say that all the time when I was a kid. How many's ever heard that? Chile con carne. Now, you don't hear much of that anymore. No. Con means with, carne, flesh. So chili with flesh. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, fleshly mind, is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed, indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So many of you are born again. You're born again. You know you are. But you know that it's been a long time since you've had real fellowship with the Lord. And so you try to please the Lord by changing the way you do things and by cleaning your act up somewhat. That won't get the job done. You have to get where the spirit of the living God begins to move in your soul and show you what the real problem is. Amen. See, what you're doing is making your own decisions about your weaknesses, about your besetting sins, about these things, and what you've done is taken that into your own hand. And folks, be honest with you tonight, we're not capable of that. These things are wrong, they're wrong. If you've done something wrong, confess it. No question. But why? This is what we're dealing with tonight. Why did you do it? Don't you want to find out why? Sure you do. That's what you have to do with this. So the Bible said you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you. And if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. All right. He just told you that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, is what? There's re reciprocal here. What's it mean? Same thing. Synonymous. Same thing. No difference. And if Christ be in you, the body's dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. That... Uh, Unsaved man, his flesh is his life. To the saved man, his flesh is his container. To the saved man, the flesh is just a place he's temporarily abiding in. And the Holy Ghost keeps it alive. That's what he just told you. The Spirit keeps that flesh alive. It's not for the unsaved man, that's him. But the Bible tells you here, Therefore, brethren, we're debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh... Ye shall die. Now jump with me on down here for the sake of time. And go to verse number 26. Romans 8 verse 26. Likewise also. The Spirit. This is the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. Also helpeth our infirmities. Now here we have God talking to God. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <coughs> most of the time, and most of the time, and rightfully so, this has to do with your approach to God for your needs. I need this, I need that, you know what I need, this, that, this, that, that's all good. That's all wonderful and good. But the principle goes higher than that. The principle goes into this. He helpeth our infirmities. Well, one of our infirmities is our utter inability to search our own soul. Yes. That has to be the work of God. Amen. And so we know that 
We know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. This is where you find out if there's any humility in your life. Pride's destroying us, folks. What does humility mean? It means that you acknowledge your inability. You come face to face with God and say, Lord, I am weak. I can't do this. And that's all he wanted to hear. That's all he wanted to hear. Because when you have reached that point of can't do, <laughs> that's when he starts. He's able to do above and beyond all that you ask or think. So here's what I'm saying tonight. We don't know the essence of the spirit. We don't know how deep the spirit can go in our spirit. We don't understand these things, but we do know he can do it. So you got a problem, all right? You got a problem. You know, you, have, you may have some raw fleshly issue, a lot of that stuff around. You may have a deep spiritual issue, a lot of that going on. God only knows. He's the only one who really knows the depth of the human heart. Yes. So what do you do? What do you do? Search your heart, know everything that's in there? No, here's what you do. You come before him and fall at his feet and say, Lord, without you I can do nothing. Yeah, right. I am nothing. I need you. Open my soul. And show me what's really going on in my heart. And when you show me, give me grace. Give me grace. Teach me, lead me, guide me. I want to, I want to walk with you. I want to love you. Yes. And I want to have fellowship with you. Yes. I'm going to trust you to do inside me what needs to be done. To have the sweetness of fellowship with the Lord. Yes. If you start praying like that to the Father through the Holy Ghost, you're going to be surprised at how he begins to maybe move in your heart and in your life and begin to show you things about your nature and about this and that you can't see. And when he does, he never does this. This is important. The, to, an un, to, a, to a believer, to a born-again believer, the Holy Ghost never points something out in your life to condemn you. Law does that. He points it out in your life to instruct you and direct you and draw you to victory, peace, forgiveness, grace, and humility. The more, listen, I wouldn't make it five seconds if it's left up to me to keep myself saved. I'd be God, you'd, feel the, you'd feel the vacuum as I, as I left out of here heading off to judgment. I couldn't, but I know him. What do you mean? I know him. Yes. Yes. What do you mean? I know him. Yes. I know him. Do you remember what he said about Abraham? Yes, he said, I know him. He's never been through what he's going to be going through, but I know exactly what he's going to do when he goes through it yes. because I know him. Well, I, say, I take the same thing and apply it to the Father. I know him. And it making a difference what we go through, what I'm going to have to go through, what you go through. I know his purpose. I know his heart. I know his soul. He's a gracious, long-suffering God. He loves to forgive. He loves to cleanse. He loves to restore. And he wants to talk to you. And this is where the Spirit maketh intercession. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes what's going on inside your soul. And he sends it to the Father from your soul. Holy Ghost does. To the Father from your soul. But to the Father means to the Son. For the Son gave the Holy Spirit. When he ascended back to the Father, he sat down at the right hand of God. And when he did that, he sent the Holy Spirit into this world. When, I, he, I, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. I will send you the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes with a distinct mission. Sent through the Father to the Son from the Holy Ghost to come into your life and do what needs to be done. And I'm going to trust God. If you trust man, if you trust man, even the best of men, I mean the best of men. You're still trusting a man. And somewhere along the line, he can fail you. He can misunderstand you. 
A lot of things that people are capable of doing, he can do to you and sometimes not even mean it. But he cannot be to you what God can be to you. So if you've got something that's working on you tonight, been eating you up now for years, you've prayed over it and you've confessed it a thousand times, you've tried to forsake it, but it just keeps coming back, maybe you're the one that needs to come to him tonight and pour your soul out and say, Lord, I've tried everything I know to try and I know I've failed. I cannot get victory, but I know victory's real. Victory's there for me, and it is. I'm going to lay myself at your feet and I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait on the Lord. And I'm going to let you move in my heart and show me what needs to be done. And then do. Because he doesn't expect you to do it all. And do for you what needs to be done. Father Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the communication of God talking to God. Coming back to us. Sending the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless tonight. Bless these dear folk who heard this, the folks who heard it live through streaming, those that will hear it later. Bless your word. My purpose in getting, you know my purpose. You know my motive. I didn't get up here to hurt anybody. I didn't get up here to condemn people. I got up here to help them. And I know our only help is going to come from thee. Bless your word. Bless it as it goes forth. In Jesus' name. Anybody raise your hand tonight and say, Preacher Lawson, don't you pray for me because God has spoken to me and let's, I want to I I continue on with him now. Maybe, maybe I can see something with what you're talking about. I'm going to try the Lord and try it his way. God bless you. God bless you here. Amen. Anybody else raise your hand? God bless you, my brethren. Anybody else? Father, now bless these dear folk. We've asked you, Lord. We've asked you. And we know what you can do. We know who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.